Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلق الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. All the praise and all the glory is due to Allah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. his family, his companions, and those who followed his path up to the day of judgment. My dear respected brothers and sisters, viewers of Huda TV, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, and welcome back to a new episode of The Prophet Teaches, where we elaborate some of the prophetic ahadith of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and try to find their locations and their occurrence in our daily life. Inshallah, we are talking about a very important hadith on the situation of Muslims during tribulations and trials, which are like a mighty stream of a great ocean. Before reading the hadith, I would like actually to invite you to call us at 2 or 249. You can also send us emails at the prophet teaches at hoda.tv or you can send your comments or your inquiries and questions also at our page at the Facebook backslash the prophet teaches. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his mercy upon all of us and to provide us with tranquility and peace of mind and to provide the Muslim nation, the Muslim Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with happiness in this life and the hereafter. Let us inshallah read the text of the hadith in Arabic and in English and then try to get some of the meanings and illuminations of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this hadith. The hadith reads as follows. An Abi هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بادروا بالأعمال فتنا كقطع الليل المظلم يصبح الرجل مؤمنا ويمسي كافرا ويمسي مؤمنا ويصبح كافرا يبيع دينه بعرض من الدنيا رواه الإمام مسلم في صحيحه The text in English It is narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira May Allah be pleased with him that the messenger of Allah may peace be upon him observed, be prompt in doing good deeds before you are overtaken by turbulence, which will be like a part of the dark night. During that stormy period, a man would be a Muslim in the morning and an unbeliever in the evening. Or he would be a believer in the evening and an unbeliever in the morning. 
and won't sell his faith for worldly goods. The hadith is reported by Imam Muslim and therefore it is an authentic hadith. The hadith under discussion talks about the situation of a believer or a Muslim during a time which is stormy, full of tribulations and turbulence, trials and tests everywhere and every while and then. There is, it is undoubtedly to say that the Muslims nowadays and the whole world is living a life of trials and tribulations. And those tests are being exposed to the heart by day and night. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving a similarity to these types of trials and tribulations like the darknesses of the night. They are overtaking. They are continuously poseless up to the extent that a person, these trials and tribulations, may cause a person to lose his religion. A person may get up in the early in the morning, he put his head on the pillow as a believer, and he gets up in the morning as a disbeliever. Or he is a disbeliever and then turns as a believer. Sometimes people sell the religion for a very worthless price. And this is one of the signs of the day of judgment. When people are sweeping, swimming tremendously in an ocean full of problems and tests everywhere. In your religion, in your money, in your wealth, in your prayer, in, in every single aspect of your life. This is a problem. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us a solution in the hadith by saying, Badiru bil a'mali fitanan, prompt in doing the good deeds to rush and actually to sweep those trials and tribulations away. The Prophet ﷺ identified for us the types of trials and tribulations, and the scholars mentioned that they are of two types. Sometimes the trials and tribulations are because of doubt. These are related to aqidah. When a person is stricken in his heart about belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is mostly related to the acts of the heart. Sometimes people give up his religion. Some people, they renounce the religion just in a blink of an eye. They talk badly about the Prophet ﷺ or about the religion of Allah. They announce their renunciation of their belonging to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This happens in just a blink of an eye. This is called shubuhat. When you read, or when you go through the internet, the Facebook or the Twitter, and you get into a lot of doubtful matters, and you discuss things related to aqidah, to the Islamic creed, and then you may fall in just a blink of an eye without realizing that. This is a type of trials and tribulations which are related to the doubts and suspicions. The other type is uh, as a result of desires and whims. When a person falls into his desire by following his opinion and neglecting the way of Allah, or the commands of the Prophet ﷺ, showing a lack of endurance or a lack of patience, like falling into zina, committing fornication, acquiring ill-got money, or getting into a haram means. This is a type of trials and tribulation by which a person may lose his life and his hereafter. This is the reason the Messenger وسلم, was very alert to that. And he used to repeat more than five times a day, reciting in his tashahud in prayer by saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min fitnatil mahya wal mamat. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the trial of this life and the trial of death. The trial of death is when a person has and the end of his life not according to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he dies in a state which is disliked 
approved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dies at a state of sin. So the Messenger وسلم, used to seek refuge in Allah and he used to say, Ya muqallib al qulub thabbit qalbi ala ta'atik. Oh, the one who turns the hearts, make my heart stable on your acts of obedience. This is very important to keep yourself on the straight path. Repeat it 17 times in your prayer by repeating in Surah Al-Fatiha, Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqeem. And a person may ask me, I'm not guided to the straight path, I'm a Muslim. Yes, you are a Muslim, but you are required to repeat it as if you are asking Allah to be stable on the straight path. Because there are a lot of ways that may turn you away and you may lose your direction in this life. And this is the end of the story if you actually lose your life or the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about our uh, boys, about our friends, about our families, uh, they are source of test for us. إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ fitna. Your wealth and your families are a source of fitna because they may turn you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person in this situation must be alert. And some people may actually be given a lot of wealth and a lot of bounties in this life. And they think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them. Some people when they are wealthy and they are healthy, they are given everything in this life while they are acting against Allah and they are fighting against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, they may believe that Allah is pleased with them. No, this is discussed in one of the ayat in the Quran. Allah said in the Quran, Though they think that what we proceed for them and grant them with of the bounties and favors of this life, like it is a sign of our pleasure, no. لا, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, بَلْ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ They do not really understand. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the meaning of a specific ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Allah is talking about the believers who spend generously in acts of worship and in charity, but they still afraid. They are have fear. So Aisha asked the Messenger of Allah and said, Ya Rasulullah, are those people who are afraid of the punishment of Allah because they committed adultery and fornication and theft and they made a lot of sins so they don't like, they cannot actually face Allah on the day of judgment? He said, no. Aisha, those are a type of people who spend in the cause of Allah. They make acts of worship. They dedicate themselves for Allah by day and night, yet they are afraid that Allah may not accept their good deeds. So they are afraid all the time, alert all the time. And this is the reason that a believer should not feel safe of the plots of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the fitan, during the trials and tribulations. When a person gives he makes sure that whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted this good deed or not, because I'm not qualified, my deeds are not to the point to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who showered his mercy, who showered his favors upon me by day and night. And this is the reason that Abdullah ibn Mubarak had a very eloquent word. And he said, in al busara'a la ya'manuna min arba' The people of full vigilance the people of understanding are aware of four major points. Number one, they are afraid of a sin that they committed in the past and they don't know whether Allah has forgiven this sin or not. They are aware of a time that's still remaining in their lives. They are afraid whether they will fall into trials or tribulations and they will die in a state of disbelief or not. 
they are also aware of the favors given to them by day and night, that it may be istidraj, it may be a type of dragging them closer, so that it's a matter of the plots of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And finally, they are afraid of their hearts, it may run away, the heart may have a state of ghafla, meaning that the heart turns away from Allah just without realizing that, and then the heart fall into love and attachment of this life. So it forgets about the hereafter, and it falls within the category of the people upon whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them said, نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ They forgot about Allah. So Allah caused them to forget themselves. To forget about their direction in this life. Their approach in this life. They are living. They are enjoying the vanities of this life. And they think that this is the end. They do not expect that there is a reward or a punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the only solution is to rush into doing the good deeds. And that's why the scholar said the meaning of this hadith is that the Prophet ﷺ is telling us to be busy with the good and righteous deeds at times of fit. And nowadays, we see the people all the time, they talk about politics, about the news, they backbite here and there, they gossip, they make a lot of problems, they talk about people badly, but they don't pay attention to their direction. So the best way is to direct yourself to the acts of ibadah, to reap them. This is what we were inshallah going to talk about, the way of survival of the trials and tribulation after having a short break. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your time and your life. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes a path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Hoda Academy, please visit us online at hodaonlineacademy.com. Hoda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Hoda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the Prophet teaches. We are talking about the Muslim position in trials and tribulation in pursuit of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We invite all of you, inshallah, to call us at 002-0238-555-248-249. You can also send us your comments at the Facebook 
backslash prophet teaches or you can send us emails at prophet teaches at hada.tv you see that on the screen right now uh, and before having the break we talked about the way of survival from the trials and tribulation and I would like to emphasize the fact that the Prophet ﷺ said people at the time of trials and tribulation they may sell their religion easily they may fall a prey to the shaitan and to the satan by committing sins without realizing that and it is uh, reported that there is a story about uh, a person who worked as an imam in UK and this man used actually to take the bus every morning to the Islamic center and return back one day he paid the fees or, uh, for the bus and the driver gave him extra change so the man looked at his pocket and he found that there is something extra so he waited and he was hesitant whether to return it back or to keep it something which is worthless few pennies or cents are worthless in this case anyhow he decided to return even the pennies to the driver and before dropping from the bus he gave the driver the pennies and the bus driver said to him uh, you are the new imam in our location he said yes he said I was actually going to visit your Islamic center and I was waiting to know you and to just introduce me to you and then the man looked at the change as if he is pointing to him that he would like he wanted to test the Muslims in their honesty when the Imam dropped from the bus his feet could not carry him and he was going to fall on his knees and he said woe to me I was going to sell Islam for just a few cents if I didn't pay the change back to the bus driver he would have an impression about Muslims that they are an honest people this is a situation which is repeated and this is a question which is asked to me myself and to everybody watching me right now how many times did you sell Islam how many times did you sell your religion for just worthless vanity of this life how many times that you neglected your prayers how many times that you give preference to the vanities to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a sign of trials and tribulation brothers and sisters there is a solution for that the best solution is to jump into making the good deeds it's reported that there is a man his name is Afif ibn Amr this man uh, he was a friend of Al-Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He visited Al-Abbas. One day he was in Mina. And when the sun declined, he witnessed that there, is, there was a man who got up and made prayers. And afterwards, a woman followed him. And Ali ibn Abi, and another, another child or a young man uh, came up and he made prayers also. So he asked uh, Al-Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib, who are those people? He said to him, this is uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, this is a cousin and this is a wife of Muhammad. They believe that he is a prophet and messenger. The man turned his face away from the Prophet wasallam for just a blink of an eye. How much did it cost him? It costed him actually more than 20 years because he accepted Islam after 20 years in the year of delegations and then he came to the Prophet and said wow to me had I accepted Islam on the day I saw the messenger and his cousin and his wife making prayers I would be one of the four people accepting Islam on the face of the earth whenever a good deed is given to you snatch it get it jump into taking it because it may save you from a lot of trials and tribulations we have a phone call from Brother Abu Muhammad from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abu Muhammad. Wa alaikum assalam, ya Sheikh. Yes, Brother. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for all that you are doing. May Allah bless you. Barakallahu feekum. Ya Sheikh. 
The first is regarding the recitation in Salah. Uh, yes. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said that uh, in reciting the Salah, the first Raka recitation should be longer than the second Raka. So I'm asking if the order of the Surah is also important. I don't no. know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yes, I... Maybe you are expected to recite a Surah that is at the top. For example, you, you recite Surah to and then the second surah must be a yes. lower surah like I, I got your Islam. question brother I got it okay is that no. important that's the first question the second question is regarding ablution yes if you are washing your parts of your body once 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 you know for example I mean you are supposed to do that you can do that am I right you yeah. can wash when you are ablu- ablution once so by doing that can you for example wash like if you are not sure of washing your hand walk I wash it twice, maybe the other parts you wash once, then one or two of the parts you wash twice, or maybe even three times. Some of them you wash once, some of them you wash twice, or do you have to wash all of them in the same order? That's the question. Okay, Jazakumullah khairan. I got your questions, Brother Abu Muhammad. Barakallahu feekum. Uh, so back to the solutions or the keys of getting rid of the trials and tribulations in our daily life. And I would like actually to elaborate them briefly because. We, we have a lot of questions to answer, inshallah. First of all, a person, whenever is given an opportunity to make any good deed, don't delay it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preferred actually a believer to compete and to contest on only one thing, which is making good deeds. Allah said in the Quran, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَلَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ Hasten. To the forgiveness of your Lord and to gardens of paradise, which are as spacious as the heavens and the earth. So this is very important. Number two, a person must uphold to the Quran and the Sunnah. In every single act and deed, this is the safest way that keeps you away from the shaitan and its ways. Number three, do not put yourself in positions of doubt and suspicion or at places which may actually make fitna for you. For example, if a person, his weak point is women, so let him not mingle with women. If a person, his weak point lies in money, so he is not actually being involved in trusts and amanat. If a person is actually weak when he watches the, the movies or the TV, or it may lead him to arousal of his desires, so he gets rid of all the spots and regions where actually it makes attraction or seduction for him in his religion. A person who may be actually tested by his position, uh, he may avoid it because he needs actually clearance in his religion. Number four, a person keeps good companionship because a friend is a very support and a good supportive means of a person of saving him from the atrocities of this life and the trials and tribulations. Number five, also seeking Allah's help and refuge in your prayers, in your sujood, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you from the fitan as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did. We have a phone call from Brother Sajid from UK. Assalamu alaikum. From KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Sajid. Yes, sir. Alaikum assalam, Sheikh. Yes, brother. Can you, can you turn off the, fo- the uh, TV, please? Yes, yes, I have turned. I have turned. So. Um, uh, so, yeah, uh, before, maybe one week, uh, I asked to, to, to you a question. Uh, uh, that question, I, <coughs> uh, the answer of that question, I didn't get. So, I want to hear the answer. Mm, I want to hear the answer of this question. The question is, uh, is Jesus Christ will be descend before the day of resurrection. Oh yes, I remember I, I remember your question that you raised in the last episode and yes, we answered sir. that inshallah. I, I will try inshallah to answer I'm your sorry, question I'm again. Very, I'm, I was really very sorry about that uh, because I didn't hear about no <laughs> the problem. question the answer. Can I hear today sir? Jazakumullah inshallah I will do that. I will answer your question inshallah. And also, inshallah, we are going to, uh, I told the brothers helping, inshallah, on this program to give the answers of all the questions through the Facebook so it would help people who did not follow up us uh, with us, inshallah, in the program. I will try to answer this question along with the other questions. 
also of the ways of keeping you stable on the straight path uh, out of the trials and tribulations is standing in the depths of the night qiyamul layl making prayers in the depths of the night because the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to his wives aiqidhu sawahib al hujar wake up the people the, the the owners or the wives of the champers the dwellers of the champers and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam invited them and said wake up to make prayers in the depths of the night because allah is the only one who knows how much trials and tribulations fell on the earth at that night. Also, there is a very important key that the Messenger ﷺ mentioned in his authentic hadith reported in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim from a long hadith in which the Prophet ﷺ said, فَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يُزَحْزَحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَيَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever would like to be shaked out, removed away from the hellfire and be admitted to the Jannah let him not die until he is a believer. And number two, he treats people in the way that he likes to be treated. This is the idea. If you don't like people to talk badly about you, so you don't talk badly about others. If you want to, people to approach you in a decent and gentle way, so you have actually to approach them in the same way that you like to be treated. If you don't like people to take your money or your wealth, so you must treat them in the normal, ideal way. This is a way of survival because Allah said in the Quran, وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ فِتْنَةً وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ بَصِيرًا And we made each one of you a source of test and trial for each body. When you drive, when you walk and talk, when you meet, when you have a conversation with any person, he is a source of trial and tribulation for you. So it is very important that you be aware and alert most of the time. These are some of the keys that the Prophet ﷺ took about in his sunnah of establishing and stabilizing our feet firmly on the straight path away of the trials and tribulation. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us and to provide us with a shield against all the trials in this life and the hereafter. Uh, briefly, inshallah, I would like to answer the questions. The question of Brother Sajid, we said in the last episode that yes, Jesus Christ is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, and this is mentioned in Surah Al-Ahqaf, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, in the context of talking about Jesus Christ, and he said, وَإِنَّهُ لَعِلْمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ And according to another uh, uh, recitation, a way of recitation of the Quran, وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِلسَّاعَةِ And he is a sign of the day of judgment. So Jesus السلام, will come on the last day uh, under the leadership of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, believing in his religion and being led in congregational prayer uh, uh, behind one of the Imams of the followers of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also I would like to uh, answer the questions of brother Abu Muhammad uh, from Nigeria. The first question is, is it necessary to uh, make or to recite the surahs after Fatiha during prayer in order according to the order mentioned in the Mus'haf. The scholar said that it is not necessary because there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of hadith of the Prophet ﷺ which mentioned that he recited uh, according to the authentic hadith reported in Sahih al-Bukhari during uh, his prayer during the night. The Prophet ﷺ, uh, prayed and he recited Al-Fatiha, Al-Baqarah and then Al-Nisa and then he recited Al-Imran you know in the order of the Mus'haf that Al-Imran precedes or comes before Al-Nisa but the Messenger ﷺ did not keep in order but as the propition it is prohibited to recite the ayahs in a reverse way so he recite the last ayah of the surah and then the ayah before and then the ayah before this is a prohibited act which is not liked and it is actually prohibited because it changes the meaning of the verses. But reciting the Quran in order is not a constituent element and it's not obligatory during the prayer. Uh, for a pollution, it is also must be performed in order because uh, according to the majority of the scholars, because this is the way uh, the ayah was revealed and the Prophet ﷺ pointed out to the Bedouin when he asked about a pollution to make it in the same way Allah 
informed him to do in ayah of Surah Al-Ma'idah and all the wudu or ways of ablution of the Prophet ﷺ were performed in the order mentioned in the ayah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We'll have inshallah a short break and then we will answer the other questions that we received through the Facebook or the email. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ask Hoda. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Hoda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic. And you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and the interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way and he asked about how can he help him. Very good question. Can they give a zakat to any of the Gawa sisters? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of worship. Are you up to date with the latest gadgets and devices? Or do you get confused when someone even mentions the word computer? Conquer your fear and learn how to get the best out of the latest computer software, smartphones and the latest cutting edge technology by tuning into Tech Talk with Dr. Baha. All of this and more in Tech Talk, only on Hoda TV. <laughs> The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to The Prophet Teaches. We continue inshallah answering some of the questions that we received through the email and through our Facebook. The first question was sent by Brother Uthman from Nigeria and he is asking about the significance of the wit prayer and doing it during the night. I would like in fact to remind him of a very important hadith which is reported on the authority of Abu Darda, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, three people, Allah loves them so much. And Allah laughs to them and he gives them glad tidings. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expresses the word or the Prophet says Allah laughs, it means that it, is, it suits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a sign of Allah's pleasure. One of those three people, and we need to concentrate about it, is a person according to the authentic hadith. It says, Allahu mara'atun hasana wa firashun layin. He has a beautiful woman and a soft uh, bed. And he looked at them and kicked them with his feet and said, let me stand in the depth of the night for the sake of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, يَذَرُ شَهْوَتَهُ He leaves his desire and remembers me and he was able to give preference to his bed and to his wife but he kicked it out for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, making witr prayer is beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to the authentic hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib which is reported in Sunan Abi Dawood in which he said, the Messenger sallallahu said, Awtiru ya ahl al-Qur'an, O people of the Qur'an, make witr prayer, the odd prayer, because Allah is witr, Allah is one, is odd, and he loves the odd prayer to be perform it. And it is uh, preferred actually to perform the witri prayer only in the 
evening, if, it is, if the person is afraid that he cannot get up early before Fajr prayer, and he may actually delay it according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu He's asking about the merit of the two raka'ats before Fajr, the Sunnah of Fajr, and it is sufficient to report for you the hadith of Ibn Umar, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, in which a man said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, O Messenger of Allah, inform me of a deed that may benefit me. And he said, keep sticking to the two raka'ats before Fajr. And also Aisha radiallahu anha said, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam report or said, Raka'at al-Fajri khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha. The two additional or supererogatory raka'ats before Fajr are better than the whole life and whatever it includes. And that's why the scholars said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave the two raka'ats of Fajr and the witr prayer even if when he was in a travel. The other question is from Brother Mustafa Abdullah, and he is asking a question. I wonder if you shed some light on the invocation conception or the concept of dua. And actually, you talked about dua, and it is sufficient to concentrate on two points out of the etiquette with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during dua that a person have a feeling of a thirst who is going to die and a person who is going to sink in a deep ocean and he is sticking to just a piece of wood, this is the feeling of a sincere person making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best time for making dua is immediately before Fajr prayer at a time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends and he asks and calls upon his servants, can you imagine? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the all-knowing, the omnipotent, the, om, the omniscient, is calling upon his slaves and saying, whoever has a sin to forgive, whoever has a problem to solve, whoever has anything in this life that I can give to him until the Fajr is announced. There are a lot of etiquettes about dua. On the top of them, to turn your face to the qibla, to raise your hands while making dua, to shed tears, and also to make sadaqa, act of a charity after the dua, it's preferable actually to make this accepted. There is another question uh, from Brother Uthman, who is saying, can a Muslim use non-Islamic bank loan to perform hajj? I would like to inform you, Brother Uthman, that one of the, the main prerequisites and the conditions for making hajj or making it obligatory is basically that you are able and capable of the costs of the journey or the trip. So a person is not actually allowed or a person is not required to make a loan to go for Hajj. Whenever the means are available for him, he inshallah can go. Uh, in addition to the fact that the loan from a bank, if it incurs an interest, so it is haram. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about it in the Quran and said what means, but those who devour riba became like the one whose shay the, the shaitan or the Satan has stricken him with madness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran that they are being given a sword or they are launching a war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. Subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment and Imam Malik was asked about it and he said that they are the worst and evilest deed that a person is given a sword to fight against Allah. Uh, we have a phone call from Brother Muhammad from uh, KSA. Assalamu alaikum Brother Muhammad. Wa alaikum as salam wa uh, Well I have a point of view uh, which I would like to discuss with you. One of my friends, he was elderly man, about 50 and uh, he had a cancer, and he died uh, when he was in the hospital. And then he died, and there was uh, some bill pending. Some? To be paid. Some what? Hospital, hospital bill to be pending. Hello? Y yes, brother, I'm following you. He died and left what? No, he died of a cancer. Oh, yes. And, uh, and mashallah, he said shahada. Uh, before he died, 
and then the very next day, and obviously he has very young children, and then there was some hospital bill left, uh, which I managed to pay for it. Uh, even though he had some money left for some other things, is it acceptable from my side to pay for it? I mean, I already paid for it. You know, is, it, is there a reward for doing such an act as a friend or as a sympathy? No. As yes. As, I, I'd like to, I would like you to uh, shed some, you know, give your views on this, please. Jazakum Allah khairan. I will answer your question immediately, Brother uh, Muhammad. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for this initiative. And in fact, uh, the answer of this question, yes. Uh, first of all, I would like actually to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive this brother. And he died, subhanallah, as a shaheed of this dunya. He died of cancer and he made a shahada before his death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of his sins. It is permissible actually that you pay off his bills and his loans and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you immensely and tremendously for what you did for your friend. And this is actually supported through the authentic hadith reported in Sahih Muslim when the Prophet وسلم, refused to make the prayers, the funeral prayers for someone because he actually left a loan. He did not settle his loans. And then Abu Qatada stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'm going to settle his loan by myself. So the Messenger وسلم, accepted that and he offered the prayers after making sure from Abu Qatada. So, so it is permissible and it is highly rewarded by Allah, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept you and accept all of your deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon you. Uh, we have a phone call from Brother Isha, Isa from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Isa. Wa alaikum assalam, ya Sheikh. My, my question is uh, about prayer. Yes. Uh, during congregation, if the Imam recites the surah uh, with uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, I hear some people saying, uh, when the Imam say Muhammad Rasulullah, then say, people say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't know whether there is any authentic hadith, uh, hadith that uh, guides this or, or not. Jazakumullah so. khairan, Brother Isa. Uh, yes, it is, there is no problem if the name of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being mentioned during prayer that a person, if a person says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala alihi Muhammad. If he sends the prayers to the Prophet ﷺ, it does not affect the validity of his prayer. But yet it is more preferable that a person listens to the Imam while reciting the Qur'an. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِطُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Whenever the Qur'an is being recited, you must attentively listen to it. And the scholar said that this ayah is uh, revealed concerning the recitation of Qur'an during prayer. And also the Prophet wasallam said in the authentic hadith reported by Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, in which he said, وَإِذَا قَرَأَ فَأَنْصِطُوا And when the Imam recites Qur'an, you must listen. And this is a preferred way. So, but if a person makes salah on the Prophet wasallam, it does not affect, uh, it does not invalidate his prayer because it is a part of the azkar which are accepted and a person sends the prayers to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even during uh, the tashahud and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. Uh, we have another question from uh, Brother uh, Turker Billu Ahmed and he is asking, is it permissible to uh, send condolence for a non-Muslim uh, in case a, a friend of him or uh, his father or his mother or his wife passed away, like a Christian or a Jew, uh, according to what the scholar said, yes, it is permissible that a person sends condolence to a non-Muslim or a non-believer. And this is actually supported through the sunnah uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam visited the Jewish uh, child as uh, he was actually a servant and he invited him, in fact, to embrace Islam and he accepted Islam and afterwards 
the Prophet ﷺ became pleased. But a person is not actually uh, suggested to say, may Allah have mercy on the deceased. You can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance for the non-believers as long as they are alive. But if they die as disbelievers, a person is not allowed to send Allah's dua or prayers for forgiveness for them because it is prohibited according to the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to do so. Finally, uh, inshallah, we are going to, ha we have only two or three questions. We'll try to send them through the Facebook, inshallah, uh, because we have a lot of questions being sent to us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of your deeds for your attendance, and may Allah provide us with the beneficial knowledge that's translated into action. May Allah shower His mercy upon the Ummah and save us from all trials and tribulations. Uh, I, at the end, send all of my uh, peace and prayers upon all of you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our deeds. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last As his was a mission of the greatest task There was only moral degeneration People clung to idol adoration.